Hey all, I've decided to do something a bit fun today instead of uh, just producing vegetables and whatnot. So uh, we've got some of these festoon lights that we got from Aldi a little while ago. And I think that they'll be really good through this area here where the grapes are gonna grow over the top. So we thought that it'd be a good idea to get that done before the weather changes and the leaves start growing. And there's something that'd be better than one box though. I feel like it might be two boxes. What do you reckon? <laughs> I feel like you were thinking, ah, oh, another video of just Zoom again. Surprise! Again. It's too much Zoom and not enough Betty for a while. <laughs> Betty's here. Betty's here. And with a second box. Second box. The festoon lights. The cat was also just yeah, here. Yeah, he's there roaming he around with me. <laughs> the cat's also here. Um, yeah, I feel like it's been a hot minute since I've been in a video, but also I feel like until the last one that we put out, it's just been a hot minute in general since we've put many videos out. It's true, it's true. But hopefully more. More! And more Betty! Yay! Can't get so enough. now that, as you would have probably heard in the last video if you watched that one, I am no longer working for the man. I'm just working for this man now. <laughs> so yeah, I can like have a little bit better of a life work balance now and not just constantly be a husk of a human being. So that's nice. <laughs> Cool. So I reckon the first thing we should do is um, test these to make sure that they actually work before we put them up. They've been sitting there in the shed for years now. We had them when we were in Melbourne and we never... I think we got them when we had lived in the apartment in Melbourne for maybe like a year or two. We had that apartment for about six years. We had intentions of um, putting them up over the balcony area, but we didn't have a handy PowerPoint. Mm. Um, and yeah, so we never got around to it. But now we have some handy outdoor PowerPoints. Yay! All right, let's check this out. Woohoo! Off to a good start. Opening up box one, and there's a bit <laughs> of mold in the top there. And also, there's a fair few spiderwebs going on in there. So that's really exciting for me. Three, two, one. Woohoo! Hey! They've got these plastic covers on them, so I think that. Uh, you want to take those off after they're up? Or might just take one off. Ooh, pretty. Ooh. No mold in this box. That's a good start. <laughs> That's a good start. Oop. Yay! So you can see on this diagram on the side here, the full length of the lights is just under 10 meters. So 9.750 meters. And from first bulb to last bulb is 4.75. So just under five meters from light to light at the end. So Betty's just gonna grab the tape and we're gonna figure out the best way to set these out so they look good. Betty's definitely the one with a creative brain, so I tend to leave design things up to her quite often. These came with some handy little hooks on the top of each globe, which is awesome. We've just had a revelation. So in trying to untangle these, which I feel like there's a like a, a lighting conspiracy where the people always try to tangle them up as much as they possibly can when they put them in the box for you. So we were untangling them and found the end that's not attached to the power cord and it had this like little plug thing on it and I took it off and realized that you can join the sets together. So you've got like just one continuous set instead of having to have like two power sources we should hopefully be able to just plug them into each other and have one so that's pretty cool perfect hmm. so does this new revelation change the plans for our pattern no i think it should still be able to go ahead as planned it will just make life a lot easier nice hmm. So with uh, part one of this going rather well, we decided to go on to phase two, which is <laughs> adding the missing kit. What are you laughing at? Ducks flying in a V! And they form a V! Yeah! 
I've heard of this before, but I've never seen it. It's the flying bee. Basically. <laughs> We've had ducks. Um, we don't have a uh, water feature down here, but the neighbours have just across our fence the dam. Mm. Um, and it's pretty empty most of the time. But we've had ducks hanging out there and they've been coming into our property and just chilling on the lawn. And I quite like it. It's they been have, great. They haven't made much, like a mess, so. Mm. <laughs> Misting system. So this is one we just got from Bunnings. It's not very exciting. It's just a 25 meter kit with 31 uh, points, 31 brass jets. Um, we haven't done any of this before. The only irrigation -y thing we've done is what we did down in the um, veggie patch mm. the last one, which worked out pretty well, but it was a bit like haphazard, like we just dodged it up as we went. But this one, since it's an actual kit, should be a bit more professional than what we did last time. A bit more better. This is the boring part of the job where Betty reads the instructions and I just get distracted by random things going around. So uh, if it was just me, I'd just gun her get into it, but she's much better than I am and is actually reading the instructions that come with it. I love some instructions and doing an inventory before I start a project. So if I get a flat pack or whatever, read the instructions, check you've got everything and your life will be so much easier. Yep. <laughs> so when she's done that, I'll get her to tell us what's what in the box. All right, introduce us to these bits. <laughs> so it's not very exciting, but you've got your, obviously your hose, which you run between all of your joins, and you have got this fancy little thing for cutting the hose where you want to put your little misty guys. Oh, hey, cat. Jets. Jets, that's the thing. Yes, words. Um, you've got two different kinds of jets, so you've got the ones that are like a T, so that's for if you just want to have like the straight bit of hose, like along a straight line. And then you've got little corner, corner lads that you put at the end if you kind of want to like finish the hose in that point. And then you've got these guys for if you want to split the hose into like one section running like lengthways and then another section running at a 90 degree angle and you've got these corner guys pretty pretty self-explanatory i don't know why you've got these straight guys but anyway that's fine that's the main parts really and there's the boring stuff like this little that's not boring at all i reckon that's probably gonna be exciting for you maybe. i think it's just a timer yeah it's just a timer and a filter Yep. And I think this is the thing that it said, don't unscrew. That looks like the thing. I don't know what it's for <laughs> I yet. I don't know what it's for yet. What is this? Auto drain valve. Oh. And then we've got these clips. So obviously they're expecting that some people want to run the hose along some timber and you can just nail it along, but that's not what we're doing. So mm. irrelevant. If anyone come over and get her hair wet, so it's just me <laughs> over here. <laughs> But look, it worked pretty well. It did work really well. Well, that one's spraying a bit haywire over, it's going outwards. Uh, nah, 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 next one. Nah, away. What do you uh, mean? Next one, yeah, that one just after that oh, hole. Yeah. yeah, that's going a weird direction. That's all right. Worked pretty bloody good. Yeah, ready for summer. I'm impressed. We're impressive. <laughs> so we mostly just eyeballed the distance between them. The instructions said sort of 600 mil to a meter distance between each one of the jets, but we just eyeballed it and did it on what we thought worked best for us. Um, the way you put them in is really simple. These ones don't have any clamps on them, which we're sus we were suspicious about. We thought that when we turned it on, it might come flying apart, but it actually hasn't. Um, so you've got your jet um, and I can't, don't know if you'll be able to see it, but uh, it's made so that you put your hose in. I don't know how that's got water in it, but it does. That's bloody weird. Um, you put it in and it can't pull out. So you're meant to put it in sort of 10 mil, so uh, like a centimeter, shove it in, and then you shove the next bit of hose in the next bit and the water fills up in between and the pressure goes out that. It's got a little twisty knob on top, which I you know, I don't know if you can see, um, and that goes undone. The, the more you tighten it, the more misty it gets. 
Um, so we've had to go around. There's a couple that we've just had to tighten up as we went. It's actually been a lot better than I thought it would. I thought we'd have a lot more time playing around. But yeah, success. And I think this will be really good for in the summer if we want to uh, water a lot of our plants um, that just want a, a a misting rather than just the hose going hard over it and disturbing it. Maybe uh, this might be where we put seedlings out and stuff like that when they still need a bit more of a delicate water. So yeah, pretty stoked. <laughs> Night party. <laughs> well, it's warm in there. What you got going on there? Oh, hi, didn't see you there. <laughs> Um, so just having a little check on our babies that we've got in the little cheapy greenhouse at the moment. So it's still been pretty cold here in, where are we? Western Victoria? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, we've still got some frost at the moment. Still getting frost occasionally, so it's, it's a bit tricky getting anything to kind of like sprout in the actual beds. We've had a couple of goes at getting some like late winter crops in there but it's not really not really doing much so we've had a go at some things in the greenhouse and they actually have been doing quite well for the most part it's probably about 50 50 i'd say with stuff that is and isn't taking off so having some real successes with things like the zucchinis and the squashes are starting to pop through um, they seem to go really well last year as well so that's awesome we've got a couple of tomatoes some basil and then quite a few flowers which i'm actually really excited about because i generally never have any luck growing flowers from seed and yeah they're probably not quite 50 percent popping but i'm happy with how many of them have actually sprouted i haven't given up on the ones that haven't sprouted yet i'm just mm. biding my time hoping that it comes through i think if they haven't by now there's some that probably aren't gonna but i think we planted these like two weeks ago now mm. yeah so how are you going about watering there? So I'm putting one of Joe's addictions to good use. <laughs> so we, we often have a few of these bottles lying around. So what Joe's done is in the cap, she's just put a couple of little holes. You just use nails for those? Yeah, yeah or a just, drill. Can't remember. Just pop some little holes in the, in the cap and it makes just like a nice little it's a little bit easier than the watering can, trying mm. to get it in. Yeah, so you can kind of just... <laughs> this is our tank water, by the way. We're not just wasting town water. Um, so yeah, just giving our little babies a water. We started off with a little like a spray bottle when the seeds hadn't actually popped yet um, to try and minimize the disturbance of the dirt over the top but now some of them are a bit more established. They can take a bit of a bottle feed. A bit easier than uh, bringing the hose over sometimes as well. So. Yeah, yeah, because you can actually fit this like in here easily, mm -hmm. which is nice. Here you go, thank you. So here's the beginnings of another new project we've started this week. Um, we're wanting a potential pumpkin patch in this area, which we uh, have grown pumpkins a couple of times now, and they just 100% overwhelm the areas that we put them in, even though we don't plant that many. But we decided this time we'll give it a bit more of a go uh, in a larger space. Now, we've got the grass that just trails here and goes everywhere. We can't kill it. Um, 
normally. So we've gone a bit hardier on this um, and have decided to just put the black plastic down for a little bit of time and see if we can get it killed underneath and to make it easier to remove in these areas. Um, we're hopeful that we might be able to get some sort of earthworks, earth moving machinery to scrape it back for us, uh, but we definitely won't be able to do that for a couple of weeks yet. So we just thought we'll put this down as a starter and see how it goes by itself. We've got the tiller machine of our own, but um, without doing something first, the tiller just would struggle with this amount of area and that type of grass. So we've put this down as a, as a temporary just to see, see how we can start off and had to weigh it down with a whole bunch of stakes and bricks because the wind as it comes up the hill will just pick it up and flip it if we don't weigh it down. Um, I'm aware that some people say you're better off using um, cardboard and mulch or just the the um, gardener's fabric, the, the anti-weed mat fabric, um, but this stuff is so ridiculous in the way it grows that I just thought, you know what, we'll just give this a crack. I know that it might end up killing some of the, back, the good bacteria and whatnot in the soil as well if it doesn't get the light through this, but we'll just put some additives back into it um, when we plant it out, add some more soil into the mix and things like that to hopefully rejuvenate anything that we lose through this process. But uh, we'll see how it goes. It's our first time giving it a crack and trying to kill this much grass in such a large area. So fingers crossed it works out one way or another. Well, I guess in addition to the never ending story of having to mow all the time in spring, well, it's getting towards spring now, really. We're having some warmer days uh, with sunshine in addition to the rain. So the grass has just gone mad and weeding, which we've talked about before, um, that I just seem to never get to the end of. It's because you just love it. Uh, I think yeah. you go out, she goes out and plants weeds at night while I'm asleep. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what happens. Um, apart from those, that's pretty much the crux of what we've got happening that's new around the place this week. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? Not really. Not really? No. Everything's pretty... Pretty great. Really. How are you feeling about um, about your new venture with the D&D stuff? We had quite a few people after I mentioned it in the last video comment that they thought that was really cool and that they're into D&D and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, like, I will talk anyone's ear off forever and a day about D&D if anyone ever wants to talk about anything D&D related. I love it. So yeah, no, it's been really awesome. We yeah, had a convention uh, last weekend and we just had a update on our like online store. So if anyone is keen for any D&D stuff, you know where to come. Yep. Cool. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.